The late 1800s, an adverse period in history in which women and men still did not have equal rights in both political and social circumstances. Women were denied the right to vote, had minimal freedom in terms of everyday responsibilities, and were often paid wages considerably less than that of men. This was due to many people during the time unfairly deeming women less capable than men, therefore illogically concluding that women's involvement in politics would undermine society. These barriers needed to be broken, and this unjust and discriminatory atmosphere had to change. Eventually, this led to a number of organizations being developed, primarily in the U.S., campaigning for women's suffrage, meaning the right to vote, thus beginning the vigorous fight for women's rights. By the turn of the 20th century, the women's suffrage movement in the U.S. gained popularity with events such as parades and marches drawing international attention towards the cause. During this time, the Philippines was under the rule of the United States, meaning the political legislations passed in the Philippines tied in with that of the U.S.'s. The women's suffrage movement began to spread to the Philippines mostly thanks to a woman known as Pura Villanueva Calao, who played a crucial role in the suffrage movement in the Philippines. She founded the Philippines' very first women's suffrage association, whose efforts eventually led to their bill being passed in favor of Filipino women's right to vote. Pora Villanueva was a woman well ahead of her time. She was not only a suffragette, but also a writer, a civic leader, a successful businesswoman, primarily in real estate, as well as the first Miss Philippines, accomplishing much within her 67 years of life, continuously breaking both political and social barriers targeted towards women at the time. Pora was born on August 27, 1886 in Iloilo, a small province in the Philippines to Emilio Villanueva, a highly educated man from Iloilo, and Emilia Garcia from Palencia, Spain. Pura was educated by her father, not like the usual girls, but like a boy, because he wanted to have a son and he didn't have a son. So she did not have the constraints, maybe psychologically, that she was supposed to be a, a, a simple woman who had no options or opportunities in life. At the young age of 18, she began her career in journalism and writing, authoring newspaper articles, books, and pamphlets, with some even relating to feminism and women's rights, which was a risky and very controversial topic to write about during that time. Alongside these accomplishments at such a young age, she also became the first Miss Philippines in 1908. This honorable achievement granted Pora much more respect and prominence as a public figure, enabling her to begin her awaited mission fighting for the rights of Filipino women by breaking the unjust political barriers denying them equal rights as men. At the age of 20, she founded the first women's suffrage association in the Philippines known as the Association Feminista Ilonga, thus kickstarting the movement in the Philippines. Their credo was, what a man can do, a woman can do as well, and Poor determinately advocated for this truth. She was never satisfied with just staying home and taking care of the children. She was very ambitious, especially for her children. So that's why it was but a natural um, development that she got involved in the suffragette movement. During the early years of the association, they held a number of events such as fun drives, public hearings, and parades in order to gain publicity, which succeeded. The suffrage movement eventually brought Pura from Iloilo to the capital, Manila, where she encouraged assemblyman Philemon Sato of Cebu to present the very first bill on women's suffrage before the Philippine Assembly in 1909. Unfortunately, the bill failed to pass, but Pura was not disheartened and continued to fight for her cause and moved towards breaking this political barrier. In 1912, the world-famous American suffragette Mrs. Carrie Chapman Catt visited the Philippines, endorsing their feminist movement and helping organize the Society for the Advancement of Women, which Pura Villanueva later became president of. Although there was public resistance to the movement, not only from men, but also some women themselves, the momentum for women's suffrage was gaining, thanks to the support from U.S. suffragettes.
In 1918, Governor General Francis Harrison recommended women's suffrage in his message to the fourth Philippine legislator. As a result, the first major conference on the then very controversial subject was held. The following week, a series of public hearings were held in which Pora Villanueva spoke in defense of women's suffrage, along with a few of her fellow suffragettes. A year later, the Senate, under its new president, Manuel Quezon, passed the suffrage bill authored by Senator Pedro M. Cezanne. Unfortunately, the bill faced severe opposition in the House of Representatives and failed to pass yet again. A pro-suffrage rally was held the following month in response to this. A number of speeches were held during the rally, the speakers including that of Pura Villanueva Calao and President Manuel Quezon himself, who was very adamant towards granting women the right to vote. As a result of the president's endorsement towards the movement, the press began siding with women's suffrage after formally resisting it. This, in addition to the hard work of Pora and her fellow suffragettes, eventually resulted in the bill being passed by both the Senate and the House of Representatives in 1933 and signed into law by the Governor General Frank Murphy to take effect on January 1, 1935. However, this law was again unfortunately suspended by the Commonwealth Constitution. The Constitution called for a plebiscite to be held with at least 300,000 women voting in favor of women's suffrage in order for that right to be granted. So in 1936, the National Federation of Women's Clubs organized a fund drive with the aim to encourage women voters to the polls on plebiscite day, in which they would vote in favor or not in favor of women's suffrage, thus determining whether the right would be granted or not. And on April 30th, 1937, 447,725 women voted in favor of women's suffrage, and the Constitution had no choice but to finally grant Filipino women the long-awaited right to vote. As a result of 30 years of hard work and determination in fighting for women's rights, Pora Villanueva received the Presidential Medal as Champion Women's Suffragette, the Outstanding Woman of 1950 Award, and crowned the number one feminist of the Philippines. Through the number of failed attempts and unfortunate setbacks in the passing of the legislation, Pura broke barriers in a way unimaginable for women of our time. Not only did the movement alter the lives of millions of women in the Philippines for the better, but it also impacted and pressurized the women's suffrage movement in the United States as seen through this video taken in the U.S. shortly after women succeeded in gaining the right to vote in the Philippines. The Philippines, that group of islands on the Asiatic side of the Pacific, which caused the United States so much anxiety, has just conferred upon its women the vote. A deputation of Philippine women is expressing its appreciation to the American governor of the islands. We are immensely happy that our struggles for political rights, extending for over a score of years, has come to a successful end without the trials and tribulations that our sisters in England and the States had to suffer. Pora's legacy still lives on through her family, her friends, and most importantly, the Philippines. This legacy is not only the incredible achievement of helping obtain the right for Filipino women to vote, but also the passion and determination which she acquired through her journey inspiring young girls today to fight for what they believe in. Moreover, the Philippines now has one of the smallest rates of gender disparity in the world, ranking 10th out of 145 countries for gender equality in the 2017 Global Gender Gap Report. Not only this, but the Philippines also has had two female presidents. This certainly would not have been possible if the unjust barriers against Filipino women were never broken by Pora and her fellow suffragettes. They paved the way for all of us, for young women, young women leaders like me, to be able to participate. And I think my aspiration is for our generation now to remember that the rights we're enjoying, um, they weren't just given to us. The world is constantly developing in terms of women's rights. And through courage shown by people like Pura Villanueva Calao, it is becoming a better place. 
empowered by the idea of equal rights for all.